All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking all about formulating a business plan. Uh, we're about to finish the last quarter of the year, and this is around the time that people start thinking like, hey, I got to come up with a business plan. Uh, you're going to see this kind of being promoted all over the place. A lot of brokerages do like these business planning sessions to plan for the new year. So I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to talk to you guys uh, about some of the ins and outs of coming up with a business plan, you know, uh, the importance of a business plan kind of some of the do's and don'ts, some of the things that I've done in the past and uh, what we have used to really kind of stay on track and continue to move our business forward and uh, in an upward trajectory year after year. So let's dive in. So let's go into first the importance of having a business plan. The simplest way I could put it, guys, is let's say you were trying to drive like from, you know, the West Coast to the East Coast. You were trying to drive from the Bay Area, you wanted to drive to uh, New York City, right? You're not just going to jump in a car and start driving. I guess nowadays you have, you know, MapQuest and Google Maps and stuff like that where you could just punch it in. It's going to tell you how to get there. Uh, but back in the days before there wasn't Google Maps or anything like that, you would literally have to map things out. Uh, it's going to be a long drive, right? So you're probably going to, even with Google Maps, you're going to have to calculate like, hey, where am I going to stay at? How long do I want to drive for? You're going to probably check your car, make sure it's running, all that good stuff. So the point I'm trying to make, guys, is that if you wanted to drive from here to New York City and you wanted to get there as fast as possible, you would have to come up with some sort of plan that you're going to follow. Um, and you're going to have to take a lot of things into consideration. You're not just going to wing it. And I make that analogy because it's just like our business of real estate, right? If you want to get from whatever production level you're at, whether you're just starting or whether you're like, you know, experienced already, you just want to take your business to the next level, you need to assess a bunch of different things. You need to have some calculated, you know, action that you're going to take. You're not just going to wing it. So you got to have a plan. I see a lot of agents fail and I could even speak for myself early on in my, in my career where I did a lot of things by just sheer hustle. Like, uh, we did a lot of phone sales where we would telemarket and cold call and it was just using our sales skills and our people skills and just being consistent and just making a bunch of calls and trying to book a bunch of appointments and trying to close as many deals as possible. That was our plan. It wasn't until later on through, uh, you know, being exposed to coaching programs and, you know, uh, other agents and team leaders who were doing things a lot bigger than us, we started to notice the common denominator and the common denominator was a lot of these successful agents and team leaders and people running organizations. They had full thought out plans with uh, how they were going to do every single part of their business. They knew their numbers like the back of their hand. They had goals, you know, for the year that were then broken down to the quarter that were then broken down to the month and to the week. And they had measurables that they would, you know, follow along the way to make sure that they were on you know, track to hit their goal. It's the same thing in business, guys. And it wasn't until we started taking our business that serious and started really mapping out where we wanted to go uh, and then reverse engineering from there and seeing, you know, breaking it down to the simplest of things. Once we started doing that and started implementing and tracking those things, that's when our business took off. And, you know, we went from 30 million in volume to 50 million to 60 million. And just last year we did, you know, over 180 million uh, of real estate sales. And this year we're probably on track to uh, be somewhere in the mid 200. So it's not by winging it. You know, there's obviously a lot of hard work and a lot of hustle, but it's by having these systems in place, this plan in place that we're following. And by being able to look at that plan throughout the year and see if we're on track, and see what adjustments we have to make. So hopefully you get some, uh, you know, some perspective of why it's important to have a business plan. Now let's talk about some of the do's and the don'ts and maybe some best practices for coming up with your business plan. And I would say the number one thing, which I kind of, you know, already talked about is starting with the end in mind, starting with where is the destination that I want to be and being really specific on that. Um, and the best place is like, look at your income. What do you want your income to be? For example, if I wanted to make, you know, $500,000 in my business, uh, and I knew that was the number because I, you know, broke it down. I looked at my expenses. I understood how much I wanted to make, you know, before taxes and factored all that in the equation. I can now take that $500,000 mark that I'm trying to hit. And I can now start to reverse engineer. I can look at, you know, what's my average sales price, you know, that I've been doing or that's, you know, happening in my market. 
Um, you know, what's the average commission per deal? Uh, how much do I have to split with my broker? What do I take home? And I can quickly do the math and break that down and say, okay, if I want to make five hundred thousand dollars, I have to sell this much in real estate, this much in volume, and I have to uh, close this many deals. Once you have that number, because you're starting with the end in mind, you can start to formulate your whole entire game plan, right? So knowing the goal that you're trying to reach is extremely important. And then you might want to go a little bit deeper, like, okay, it's not just about making that 500,000, it's what do I want my business to look like? Do I want all those sales to come directly from me? Do I want to work with buyers? Do I want to work with sellers? Do I want to work with both? Um, do I want to, how many days a week do I want to work? You know, who's my target audience? Like what's my ideal customer that I want to go after? Am I working with first time buyers? Am I working with move up or, uh, sellers who are downgrading? Like who is my client avatar? That's extremely important because when you can formulate a plan or develop like who your client avatar is, it's going to help you stay focused because when you get someone who's outside of that avatar, then it's easy to say, hey, that's not in line with my business plan. So I'm going to either say no to that business or I'm going to have to really think twice before taking on that business. Um, and maybe or maybe I can refer it out. And I'll give you a good example. Like my team and I, we are based in San Jose, California. Uh, we service the Silicon Valley. So it's going to be like a little bit of the East Bay, a little bit of the peninsula and the majority of the South Bay. Like pretty much that we draw a circle around there. And, and you know, if it's give or take within a 30 or 40 minute drive, We'll service clients because those are the areas that we know and those are the areas we have experience in and we're able to you know service those clients at a higher level now once in a while we'll get referrals for clients who want to buy or sell a home in uh, modesto or stockton or tracy or los baños or hollister or somewhere that's outside of our area or sacramento right it happens people are maybe moving out of the bay and moving to sacramento so in those situations, because we have a certain client avatar, like we have a specific type of client, a specific you know area that we want to service, it's easy to say, hey, if I have a client that wants to buy in Sacramento, I'm not going to go try to service that client in Sacramento, even though my real estate license is good there and I can you know, drive there, it's a couple hours away, but am I going to give the best service? Do I know that area very well? Is the price point? you know, worth it for me? Is it in line with my goal of how many homes I have to sell so that I can reach the, you know, the commission, you know, the gross commission I'm trying to achieve in the year. So when you have a client avatar, then it's easy to say, no, I'm not going to touch a client in Sacramento because it's going to pull me away from where I'm trying to go. So for clients in Sacramento, I've developed relationships with other agents who service those areas. And it's really quick a really quick decision to say, hey, I'm just going to refer it to my buddy out there who I know is really good and knows that area and I'll collect the referral fee and I could be back on track servicing the clients that I want to service. What a lot of agents do is they will try to service clients all over the place. Like they will try to drive out to areas and you got to start thinking like, is that efficient? Is that good for my business? If I spend all these hours driving out to this area, is it taking me away from servicing the clients who are going to get me to my goal? So if you don't understand your client avatar and you don't understand who you should say yes to and who you should say no to, how do you expect to get to your goal uh, as quickly as possible without as many speed bumps, without being derailed from, you know, from the straight line that you're trying to achieve from here to your goal, right? So you have to understand your client avatar. Um, now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is you know, once you understand like your goal and where you, where you're trying to go and you understand like what clients you're trying to serve and what you want your business to look like, right? Um, you also got to figure out how you're going to make that happen. And that's where you're going to want to go deep on developing your lead generation pillars and saying, okay, how do I go about getting business? A lot of agents make the mistake of trying to get business in too many ways. And here's the problem with that. And I'm going to tell you a story about us when we first started out is, when I first started out and I was trying to build my team and build my organization and really take my business to the next level, I was constantly looking at different avenues. How can I get leads? And you name it, I've tried it. Like I went after like probate sales and how can I, you know, buy this course on probate sales? Uh, how can I do farming and start a farm at a high level? How can we do like networking or create like a networking group and stuff like that? 
How can we do door knocking? You know, should we go out and door knock? And we tried all of them. And there's so many ways that you can get business, right? So it's not about one, it's not about saying one way is better than the other. It's about understanding that there's a lot of ways to do the business. But the problem that most agents make, and I made this problem early on, is that I try to do too many things. I try to do like 17 different pillars and none of them ended up working. I ended up wasting a bunch of time. I ended up spending a bunch of money. And when I had to look back, uh, I got no results from that, right? It wasn't until we got laser focused and started narrowing things down and saying, okay, where do I want my business coming coming from? If I can pick and choose the one that I like the most, the one that resonates with me the most, what would it be? And that's where we started boiling it down. Like I want to work with more of my friends, my family, my, you know, my past clients, the ones who already know me and trust me. And then also because everything is moving online, I want to be able to tap into online lead generation. And those are the ones that we picked. Doesn't mean that door knocking doesn't work. It doesn't mean that working open houses every weekend doesn't work. It doesn't mean that cold calling doesn't work. It all works. Whatever you apply yourself to and whatever you're consistent on is going to work in the long run. But I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you only pick two things that you're going to go good at. You're going to get good at and you're going to go deep on and you're going to say, how can I be the king of that process or how can I be the queen of that process? You know, and how do I, how can I go deep with it so that I make my process efficient and I start to build momentum and then your, your results start to compound. And it wasn't until we really started getting laser focused and we started also analyzing other uh, team leaders, you know, through these coaching programs we're in that we saw a common denominator as well. Once again, it's like all of these team leaders or all of these successful agents, they can tell you right off the bat, these are how I get leads. I do this, I do this, and maybe I do that. Those are the three things I do, or those are the two things I do. I don't do anything else. Like I know they work, but that's not my thing. That's not my cup of tea. I don't like that. That doesn't, you know, resonate with my personality. I like doing this and I like doing this one. And that's what I encourage all of you guys to do when you're formulating your business plan is you want to pick the things that you're going to go all in with because when you go all in, that's how you're going to get the results the fastest. That's how you're going to create that consistency. And that's where you're going to start to build that momentum. Like I said earlier to where by the time, you know, if you were to stick with one thing uh, versus trying five different things, you will have a lot more results in that one thing than to try all these five different things and do them kind of halfway, right? So you get what I'm trying to say there, hopefully. So we got to start with the end in mind. Where do we want to go? We also got to look at, you know, what do we want our business to look like? Like what type of client? Who's my ideal client? Who am I saying yes to? Who am I saying no to? How many hours am I working? Uh, who am I going after? And then we got to go down to how am I going to go out there and get the business and how am I also going to pull this off as well? So also analyzing like what are some of the things that I need to make this thing happen? Like if these are my two or three pillars, like who do I need on my team? What systems do I need to have in place? Do I need an assistant? Do I need a transaction coordinator? Am I going to be the one doing everything? Um, but you should hopefully have it in your mind that eventually you're going to be passing off some of these things to an assistant or, uh, you know, an outside outsourcing and stuff like that. So you can get more of your time back. But guys, like all of these things come into play. And then even once you formulate that business plan, you have to be extremely disciplined to stick with the plan and not derail yourself and not get distracted by these shiny objects. Cause if you're on Instagram or if you're on YouTube or if you're on Facebook, or if you go out there and network with other agents and you talk to other agents who are having success, you're going to hear so many different ways and they all work, like I said, but if you constantly get distracted and get pulled in different directions from your business plan that you got, that you committed to, you're never going to have that consistent success. So you have to stay disciplined. You have to say no. It's almost like you have to have that tunnel vision and you have to go all in on the plan that you've committed to. It wasn't until we started doing that, which was way later in my career. Uh, I'm going on almost 20 years now of being in the business, but probably the first half of my career was a lot of hustle and a lot of trying, you know, trial and error. And the second half of my career was when I really, really got disciplined and stuck with some things. And that's when we saw the business take off and continue to grow. And now we're able to look at the business and really understand it. And we have data and we've tracked things and we can tweak it. And we can make a lot of calculated decisions because we've been tracking these things and we've been consistent at a lot of these things for many, many years now. So guys, there's a lot, you know, when coming up with a business plan, but I hopefully emphasize today on the importance of it and gave you some pointers on what you need to do. 
Uh, I don't expect you guys to know all of this, you know, right off the bat. It took us a lot of years, but you've got to have a plan in place that you're going to follow. Now, if you guys have any trouble, if you have any questions, if you want a mastermind, if you want some free coaching or free tips, I'd love to talk to you offline. You'll see some links in the description. Feel free to book a time with me and we can chat and I'd love to share, you know, what we're doing and, and see how it can help you in your business. So hope this was valuable today, guys. We'll talk to you soon.